We are now going to move into our second lecture. And before our second lecture, we are going to be inviting Ras Wilde Safari Makone, who is also a vice chancellor at the Rastafari University of Higher Life Learning. Uh, he's a former director of the Student Affairs at the College of Agriculture, Science and Education. He is also a servant of, the, of His Imperial Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie the first. Now, he is going to be presenting the second lecture on uh, something I'm sure that is going to be dear to the hearts of the people of Portland, and it's Nanny of the Moors of Portland. Very interesting title. So please uh, help me welcome by putting your hands together and welcoming to the microphone, Ras Wilde Safari Makone, delivering Nanny of the Moors. And a honor to be able to stand before you and to speak to you on the subject, Nanny of the Moors. More is spelled M-O-O-R-S. Who are the Moors? Possibly prior to this discussion, you never had to contend with the subject more. In the, ta in the time that the Moors lived in Jamaica, it is a time that you are slightly familiar with. Because the education process that has informed us, that has enlightened us, has not been one that was designed to expand our knowledge. The education system that has fed us and that has made us was designed specifically to give you information that is European specific. In fact, it is information that subjects you, the individual black person, to a literal assault on your senses. They did not tell us the truth. For this reason, you are not really familiar with the term more. We, as a people, before the slave ship, we were Moors, M-O-O-R-S. Some of the things that I will say will absolutely not be familiar territory for you, but that is understandable. I have said, you never got the true story. What you got in the education system was what was designed as a curriculum to enlighten you on the history and the culture of Europe. I will begin by talking about a conquest. And the year is 711. Now, 711 is a long, a far way away. But it did exist in the same way that 2014 is our present reality. In the year 711, there was an African general named 
Tariq Ibn Ziyad. Those of you who have your pens, it is going to be important that you write this down. Because when I am through talking, either I am a madman, or the things that I have said are true, you have the opportunity to go on the internet and to come to this library and to research the name of the general, the African general from North Africa, is Tariq, T-A-R-I-Q, I-B-N, Ibn Z-I-Y-A-D, Ziyad. Tariq Ibn Ziyad crossed <coughs> Tariq Ibn Ziyad crossed the Straits of Gibraltar, which is a small, narrow strip of land that separates North Africa from Southern Europe. He entered what was then called, and is still called today, the Iberian Peninsula. He carried an invading army of Africans. These Africans were known as Moors, M-O-O-R-S. Tariq Ibn Ziyad fought the European people and conquered them. This is an African in the year 1711. 711. The conquered territory included Gibraltar, Spain, Italy, Portugal, and parts of France. A European scholar, in a book titled, The Moors and Portugal's Global Expansion, edited by Ivan Van Sertima. On page 336. I am going to quote from a European scholar. The reins of the Moor's horses were as fire, their faces black as pitch, their eyes shone as burning candles, their horses were swift as leopards, and their riders fiercer than a wolf in a sheep's pen at night. The noble gods, that is G-O-T-H-S, please remember, write it, and then you will be able to research it after this. The noble gods, these were the Germanic tribes that ruled Europe, specifically those places that Tariq Ibn Ziyad attacked and conquered. The noble gods were broken within one hour. That is when Africa arrived in Europe and attacked. The war lasted one hour. In one hour, the European armies were crushed and Africa was in charge of Europe. The year 711. This rulership of Europe by the invading African army lasted 800 years. Right into 1492. I am telling you facts of history, but you could not have known because the Europeans would not have taught it in school. In 1492, when Christopher Columbus 
went to Isabella and Ferdinand for equipment and ships and monies and sailors to go on his journey of discovery. Isabella and Ferdinand had just completed a victory against the Moors in Spain. In the capital of then Spain, which was Granada, the Moors had survived from the time they landed. But let me back up a bit. When they came to Europe, Europe was in shambles. They were not in any way educated. They didn't have science, they didn't have art, they didn't know astronomy, they didn't know physics, chemistry. It was the armies of the Africans and the Africans who followed who established in Europe at the time. Universities, they also established the sciences in the culture that they built. They taught the Europeans every possible fine art, including fine dining, <laughs> because they didn't know how to eat. We taught them during the period 711 to 1492. <clears throat> Isabel and Ferdinand, you are familiar with those names. Isabel and Ferdinand would have wanted to give Columbus, would have wanted to give Columbus the soldiers, the sailors, and the ships. But they couldn't do it. They were busy. The Blackamoors, because that is what we were called, were still ruling Spain. Because they were still ruling Spain, it was not possible for Isabel and Ferdinand to pay attention to Columbus. There was continuous warfare between the Spanish, that is the European people, and the Moors, the African people. So it took one final war in Granada when the Spanish defeated the Moors and broke the back of the Moorish resistance. Once that was done, <laughs> they were able to send for Columbus and say, okay, you can now go on your voyage of discovery. <coughs> there is another element. There is another element <coughs> to this story. And that is, at the time that Tariq Ziyad arrived in Europe, the Europeans got together and they said, no, we will not be ruled by an army and a people from Africa. So they developed a program called the Recon. Kista. It is a Spanish word meaning the reconquest. So about 10 years after the invasion, they started to fight back. And during the next 500 years, the Europeans fought the Moors. Around 1220, they were able to defeat the larger group of Moors. 
But the Moors in Spain continued their dominance. And it was not until 1492, <coughs> it was not until 1492 <coughs> that the back of the Moorish resistance was finally broken. I am talking about Nani of the Moors. When Isabel and Ferdinand won that last war against the Moors, one of the first things that they did was they proceeded to do what Europeans normally do at the end of any war. They proceeded to kill the Moors, to murder the Moors, to maim the Moors, and to rape the Moorish women. The Moors were now on the run. They tried their best <coughs> to cross back over the strait of water by which they came. Some of them made it back to Africa. Those who did not were rounded up by the Spanish. And they were placed on ships. And they were distributed in the Caribbean islands owned by Spain. So what we're talking about here now is Trinidad, Cuba, Hispaniola, otherwise Haiti, and Jamaica. So that the first black slaves that came to the islands that I just mentioned, I mentioned <coughs> Trinidad, Haiti, Cuba, Jamaica, those islands, the first African slaves who came here did not come from Africa. They came from Spain and they were known as the Blackamoors. The question is, so who were these Blackamoors? These were the people who civilized the Europeans whose names I have called. They were the ones who taught them civilization and built a glorious civilization for the Europeans. Gave them a foundation upon which they were supposed to build and upon which they built. When they sent their former masters, that is when the Europeans, the Spanish, sent their former masters to the islands that I just named as slaves, they felt that they had completely obliterated the Moors. As far as history is concerned, these people don't exist anymore because we have reduced them to slavery, sent them into Caribbean to cut sugar cane. And so the Moors came here. It was not until after the Moorish population in Spain had been decimated, that is all of them were now in the Caribbean, that they looked to Africa and started bringing the black man from Africa. The black man from Africa came and met with the black man from Europe, who was the former master of the Europeans. One of the first things that the Moors did when they came to Jamaica, they said that they would not be slaves. That is, they would not serve a European master. 
nor would they serve a European God. The Moors were a Muslim people. <coughs> the Moors were a Muslim people. And they did not give up their religion. They did not give up their names, and they did not give up their language. They kept their history alive by constantly telling the Africans from Africa, we were their rulers. We were their masters. They can tell you that you are a slave, but I, built Spain, I made the European what he is today. I will not serve him. The vast majority of Moors were sent to Hispaniola. Slavery in Hispaniola did not last long because the Moors in Hispaniola would not allow it to last. By 1692, they had destroyed the European armies in Hispaniola. They took on the might of Europe including Napoleon Bonaparte, and they defeated them in war. Then they took on Spain, France, and anybody else from Europe who wanted to come to fight the black man in Haiti. They constantly defeated them. So that during the height of European power in those years, when the European armies were considered the most violent, aggressive, and victorious, they could not defeat the Moors in Haiti. There was a Jamaican Moor named Bookman. And Bookman heard what was happening in Haiti. Bookman, remember when I say more now, you know, it's the same maroon. Bookman stole away on a ship and went to Haiti, where he joined up with the Haitian resistance. Bookman was a voodoo, a obia high priest, a obia man, high priest. He was not a Christian man. He did not subscribe to the religion of the Kamkara. He stowed away on a ship to Haiti, shine up with the resistance, and he was the African Moor who led and started the Haitian Revolution. And when it was over, from 1692 until today, the Haitian people have not been slaved, but they have not been loved. When we get loan and grant and whatever else like a handout that is reserved for a slave people, the Haitians don't get that because they are not a slave people. They defeated the slave master legitimately in war and they build palaces in Haiti and cities of defense that still stand even until today. But I know you don't hear about it. The internet do it, have it? Go on the internet and look for the palaces of the emperor 
Desaim. It is spelled D E S S A M I N E S. Look it up and you will see that I am not making up <coughs> something pretty for me. It is the history of us, our story, not his story. It exists. There is much that we can be praising ourselves about. In the meantime, there were these two European fellows. One named General Penn and the next one named General Venables. They were sent <clears throat> by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth I to Jamaica to attack the Spaniards. The Spaniards were then the legitimate government of Jamaica. Remember Columbus had come here and he had told a notorious lie about discovering Jamaica and discovering the people who he told another lie. He said they were Indians. They're not Indians. They were not Indians then, and they're not Indians now. But the history books still assess up. If you guys ever reach Guyana, ask those people if them is Indian. If you reach America, ask them if them is Indian. They will tell you who them is. They have a name, you know. But the European history don't call it. Is somebody calling the name? It is Inuit. I-N-N-U-I-T. Maybe I don't pronounce it properly. The Moors. Meanwhile, in Jamaica, Mr. Venerables, and what the next one name, my brethren? Pen. Like, hot pen. <laughs> yes, General Pen. They came down here on the instructions of Elizabeth. Now imagine this. <coughs> Remember, you know, these are Christian people. Really nice people. The love of Jesus is infused in them. So why is it that England is now going to look at Spain and say Spain shouldn't own Jamaica and send an army down there and kill out the Spanish army and take over Jamaica and put up the British flag? I thought that since they are Europeans, they are brothers. But it don't seem like that. It seems that maybe they will fight each other to the death. And they'll kill us in the process too. When this British completed the conquest of Jamaica, the Moors, the Spanish slaves who had been brought from Europe at the end of the war and turned into slaves in Jamaica. When the war between the British and the Spanish was over, they walked away. When the British took over, they never have no slave down here because the Spanish people them did have to run away from the plantation, find a boat and make it back to Spain before the British killed them. But not so. When this British went to the plantation, <laughs> no slave never did it. All of them left and went into the hills. The British had to start over. It is these people who them call maroon. These same maroon people now went to the hills. Them never stay near. That is. <clears throat> 
You see the landed level? Them no want that. Them go up, 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 till them find a place named Moore Town. And so it go, you know. I wanna tell you the way it really go. Moore Town is named after the Moors of North Africa who conquered Europe in 711 and ruled it until 1492. And then the Spanish bare face and out of order carry them come a Caribbean, come slave. And now them walk gone back up in the hills. And the British said, but it can't go so. It's war. So the Moors said, if it's war, then come. We were your masters, and we will not be your slaves. And so the war came. The Moors, the Maroon Moors beat them every time in a Jamaica. Them beat them street, corner, and lane. And when the British couldn't take it no more, them asked the Maroon them, if we could have worked out something, like something peaceable. And the Moors said, okay, make we talk. And then talk. The British said, we will leave you alone if you leave us alone. We only ask one condition, and that is your, if any slave run away, you bring them back. The Maroon said it couldn't work like that. The most we can do for you is we don't take them in, but we can't bring nobody back. It was not only the Moors, you know, that was up there in the hills. But they don't tell you that part of it, neither. There were Africans who came off of that ship and them sell them in the slave market. And when the Bucky Master carried them, go back to the plantation and pull the chain. You see, by a morning, them man they gone up into the hills, them now slave. So there was always a population of free black men along with the maroon up in the hills. So the maroon would tell them, don't come to us. Because you see, the maroon, the initial maroon was the moor from Spain and Europe. After a while, <coughs> the Maroons took in some of the West Africans that came. So the, the, the Moors were a group of the European African and the African African. And then outside of the said plantation and outside of the Moors, you have another group of free black men who lived in this and every day them walk come down at the puppy down at the plantation, walk with the slave them, talk with the slave them, gather up food and whatever them need, and go back to the hills. That never stopped during slavery. I, I had prepared a script here, you see? But I noticed I don't really open it yet. <laughs> so, I get the feeling that if I open it, it might take a little bit longer. But you know what I believe? I believe that you guys understand what I have said. In understanding it, it is your responsibility to research it. Because it's your history. And what they have done so far is not allow you to even glimpse at it. You see the situation over there in Haiti? You see the Haitian black man? Him not go too far. In fact, he can't go too far because him on the war watch. England are watch him. Spain are watch him. France are watch him. Them three there in particular. Them watching him because he has defeated them in war, and in defeat them, bad, bad, bad. I am not talking about, like, say, 
the war was nice. The wars between the Moors of Haiti and the European armies were bitter wars. And the blood that was shed was massive amount of bloodshed. It, it would have made, those were what you call race war. War that you cannot afford to lose. In fact, it's war we lose while we die and now, you know. That's how we got carried away into slavery. And the Haitians have been relegated to a position where they cannot rise because Europe will not assist them because they beat Europe in war. So we look at Haiti all the time and we say, boy, the man, the wicked down there, the man, the evil, the man, the practice voodoo, and that is why Jesus have them down. But it's not really so. They have not been allowed to take part in the world commerce. And that's it. that is why it is like that. Let me just look to see if there's anything in this that I would need to leave. So far, is I have connected the Moors of Moortown with the civilization that started in 711. I have also brought it to your attention that how we were taught to view ourselves. That is, before the slave ship, we were nothing. We never have no religion, no culture, no language, no history. That is a fallacy. Because I have showed you we are from 711. We were actually the people who were ruling Europe. We literally set up ourselves. We teach them and then them turn around and slave us. Let me wish you folks a very, very good day. It was nice talking to you. It's not the first that I've talked to you, do you know? I used to talk to you when I was a teacher at Teach Me. This little man here can testify. I'm not so little now. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your We'll make a call on the phone. Vice Chancellor of the Rastafari University of Higher Life Learning, right here in Portland. Do we have any questions? Hello, sir. I would like to find out why were the Moors interested in conquering parts of Europe initially? It is a question that I can attempt to answer. You see, embedded in the religion that they serve, there is this thing about conquest. The Muslims, they will go out and conquer because they feel that it is their responsibility to make the world a better place. It is the same thing with Christianity. They feel that they can go out and make the world a better place. So the Moors decided that those people down there was living like animals. So let us go and civilize them. It's the same thing happened to we. Them look and them say, those people over there, no civilized enough. So let us now go and Christianize and civilize the savages. So the Moors went down there and they did Islamize and civilize them. Because, you see, up until that time, when the Moorish civilization was flourishing in Europe, there was nothing like it anywhere else in the other parts of Europe. Hope it's satisfied. Are there any other questions? Are you saying that an attempt at civilization was the main reason for slavery in the first place? No. I just plain wickedness <laughs> was the reason for slavery. You can't even have a reason for slavery enough, and no man is supposed to want to slave no other man. 
Nobody couldn't have a right like that. It's not supposed to happen. So, it was more of an economic basis. That is, you see, in the building of an empire, you cannot have a cause that is so great that you say, no, I'm not going to do it because of that. In the building of a civilization, anything that must dead, have it dead. That is how you build an empire. And that is what was done to us. It is not just the religion. It is much more than that. So are you saying that in wanting to be civilized or spread civilization across the continents, the Moors the more is after the same thing that the wise did to us? You mean the, the slavery? Yes. Look, listen. Slavery. Slavery as an institution in all of the history of all of the world always did dead. It did dead. But you see the civilization of a nation, that is not civil, the slavery of a nation and a people that never did it. You used to have white man a slave, white man, and white man a slave, black man, and black man a slave, white man. But you never had a situation where one race went to the homeland of another race and took them captive. Caribbean and bring them come here. So take away everything, language, history, culture, turn them in a blank slate and then turn them over again and them look like white people. <laughs> so much so that you don't even know that you end up and look like white people. Maybe I'll, a one or two persons inside that have a vex with that. I'm not to look like white people. I come to the same library here a couple of days ago, and a nice lady tell me, uh, say, look how I mash up myself. <laughs> and, and when I was leaving, a little boy come and he was smiling at me. And she said, no, 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 don't, don't touch him, don't touch him, I'm the sweetie, man. Hey. Yes, a nice lady, though, you know, because I spoke to her nicely. Probably she be hearing me now. I don't see her since I come in. <laughs> Any more questions? All right, Tom? All right, thank you very much. Put your hands together. Put your hands together again for our last school, the Safari and Makode. My son, so the last Safari University. And of course, my former teacher. All right. We know we're celebrating Black History, and before we get to the second, or to the third and final lecture, I'm going to go through some Black History celebration, uh, certification, so to speak, as to why is it that we choose to celebrate Black History? This one month of the year has been set aside so that all the peoples of the world can honor the past of a people who are brought who were brought to this country in political bondage. This month allows us and every Jamaican to celebrate the rich traditions of Africans while at the same time celebrating those aspects of their own culture around their own positive contributions to society. Black History Month is a time when people of African ancestry can come together in memory of our rich past, a past that has largely been hidden from us. It is a time when we are given the opportunity to learn many of our contributions and accomplishments, which have historically been taken for granted. And you have heard Ras Makonen go through the gamut of those things that were taken from us. Black History Month is a period when the younger generation can take time to sit and listen, just like how we are doing now, to their elders share heartful memories of their own experiences and struggles when they were young. It's a time when all can 
cry together over all those souls that died during the passage to this country on slave ships. This is a time when we can cry about many of the laws and societal rules that this country has adopted that continue to hold us in bondage even without the chains. It is also an opportunity to correct many of the misrepresentations, misunderstandings, and fallacies of African culture. Black History Month promotes opportunities for open dialogue and the personal interactions between many cultures. These conversations and interactions can lead to the better understanding and appreciation for what experiences and daily dilemmas each of us go through as we all try to make contributions to our families and our larger society. Eventually, Black History Month will be recognized as one of the first real frontal attacks on this society, on this social construct known as race. Perhaps then, people will come to understand that there is only one race in this world, and that is the human race. And finally, Black History Month is also the one month of the year that we all come together in celebration of what can be if we as a society are open and willing to embrace the past just as we embrace the future. Somebody sent me on Valentine's Day a little thing that says with Valentine's Day. Blank Valentine's Day. I love you every day and day. Same thing as Black History Month. Yes, it is Black History Month, which we honor the people. Sorry.